Hello, so let's start and implement iteration number two, displaying the units inside one picker view. So let's start as we followed in the, um, in the uh, plan or the solution implementation plan for this project and create a, a file to hold the units and the different conversion factors. So we go to, uh, to file and say new, new file. You can also right click anywhere here and say new file. Once you um, create a new file uh, or select a new file, it opens templates. Uh, we are creating a new file for iOS. There are different categories of template. We want to use a resource file. And there are different types of files that you can create as a resource for your application. When I use property list and say next. We'll ask you to enter a name for the property list. Uh, do not use space. Enter a name without space. And the name you enter here is the same name that you will use inside the code to load your units. In project number one, some of you made a mistake, mistakes by, be, be, because they saved the file with a certain name, then go to the code and open and use a different name. So we'll say that uh, we're going to give this uh, name units, uh, uh, units list. And we're going to put it in a group. You can, there are two groups here, one at the project level, one at the subgroup. So we're gonna I'm going to use that subgroup here. doesn't matter. Where you want to save it, I'm going to save it with my project. And then create. So notice it adds here a file. This is the name of the file, unitslist.plist. Notice that the L is uppercase. This is important. And here you see the file has a key column the type, and then the value. The default type is dictionary. In project one, we switched to an array. Here, we're going to leave it as a dictionary and add the units as dictionary. So click on the plus next to root to add the first item. Notice here, in a dictionary, you can add the key. In an array, the key was always a number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you couldn't edit it. So here we're going to use a new item. So I will use the unit name to be the item. So I will say inch. The type of that item is a string. The type of the value. So my value here is number. And this will be uh, one. Because to convert from one inch to an inch, we use one. Then enter, so that's feet, and it's 12. I'm going to use this as number. Then meter, and this was, I believe, 39.371. Oops. Uh, Going back to that video, 393701. Uh, then I use kilometer, and that's a number, and this will be 39370.1. And finally, is mile. I added a space, so make sure there's no space here, and then the number. And then finally, uh, this will be 63360. 63360. You can add other units if you would like, increase those number of units. And I always say uh, make the app your own um, uh, by implementing the same features, but add to it, make a change either in the data or in the view or by adding other functionality. So that's the first step to create the file. The next step will be to uh, go to the view controller and implement the protocols for the picker view. So the view controller is defined on this line. That's the line that has the definition. I folded, I folded the picker view and if you don't have this folding ribbon, you can go to file, you can go to Xcode, Preferences, 
and then go to editing text editing and check the cold folding ribbon here and the focus code blocks on uh, hover and then the line number so when I hover here I can uh, fold any of the blocks so I folded the class block this is the definition of the class so this says that I have a, a software unit called the class the name of the software unit is view controller the column is an operator that allow you to extend another library class so here I'm saying I'm extending or building my class upon another library class called UI view controller I want to add another responsibility for the class so I will add a comma space and then enter the delegate so I will say UI picker view so UI picker view delegate, that's the first protocol I want to implement. Notice here it says protocol. A protocol is a software unit similar to class, except it only has definitions, does not have actual instructions. So I'll say UI picker view delegate, and then add another comma to add the definition for UI picker view data source. So we want our class to do two things, be a UI picker view delegate and UI picker view data source. Once you complete this, you notice that Xcode will give you an error. If you click on that, it says view controller does not conform to protocol UI picker view data source. What does this mean is if you want to be certified if you here means the view controller if the view controller wants to be certified as a picker view data source it has to implement the required functions of the UI picker view data source so some of the functions of a delegate or a protocol are required so if I go to picker view data source and you will see here in the number of components in picker view you see next to it the word required required means any class that implements that uh, protocol must provide a definition or an implementation of that function the number of rows is also required so these two are required if you look at the delegate the picker view delegate and look at the function that it has they are not required they are all optional uh, functions, which means that you do not have to implement those functions if you are a picker view. You can, and that's probably why you're implementing it. Here I'm implementing it because I want to provide the title, but if I don't, it's not required. So in the picker view, now that I made the controller a picker view and capable of a picker view, let's add those different functions. So there are three functions that I want to add. The first one is the uh, number of components. So as a data source, picker view as a data source. Trying to get back to the data source. There's the number of components in picker view and number of rows. So I will say here number of components. Once you start typing, since the view controller now became a picker view, Xcode recognizes the methods that are available in the picker view and tell you there's a number of components. Do not type that. Just double click here and or hit enter and let Xcode type it for you. Before I proceed, let's talk a little bit about what got added. And I'm going to hide my area so that you can see my code. Here is the function definition. This line here, line 23, that's the definition of the function. The keyword function, it says number of components in picker view, that's the name. This is the parameter of the function. Then something new, the dash followed by the greater than represent the return this means that the function provides whoever calls that function back with data a function can return data to whoever is calling the function so who is calling that function 
The operating system will call that function in response to the pickle view attempting to build the number of components. So the pickle view, when it builds the number of components, notifies its data source, which in this case, this class, and says, where is the function that says number of components? So it comes here to number of components. That function is required to provide an integer number. So how can a function provide an integer number? There is a keyword called return. And before I do the keyword return, notice what Xcode does when it adds a function. It adds a placeholder. This word code highlighted in blue, it's a placeholder. But you have to delete that placeholder. Otherwise, Xcode thinks that, or the compiler will think that this is actual instruction. So I have to delete that. The keyword return, the keyword return passes back to whoever calls the function a value. This could be a constant, could be another function that's returning a value. The value that you provide here has to be of the same type as the type you put in the definition of the function. So this is saying the function receives from the caller. The caller in this case will be the operating system which will provide the function with the actual bigger view that's trying to build the components. The function then need to provide back an integer, a non-decimal number. So after the return, I put a space and say one. So I'm saying here that the function that I want the uh, bigger view to construct only one component or one column. So that's that function. Then I have another function, number of rows. Sorry, I typed wrong. Number of row. So I typed the number of row and it's not coming. So let's go back to the documentation and see what is the case of number of row. So number of row is not really a name of the function. It's the name of the parameter inside the function, but the function name is picker view. So I type picker view. So here it is. These are all the functions that are named Baker View. So you'll say, how can I have more than one function with the same name? Because they have different parameters. So the parameters they receive, they are different and have different titles. So here, this is the number of rows in component. So the number of rows in component, this function receives the picker view and receives the component which is the column and then the function needs to provide the a number to represent how many rows so i don't know yet how many rows i should provide because in reality the number of rows will be the same as the number of rows in that file so since i did not yet load the file i don't know how many rows will be in that function. So for now, I'm gonna delete that code thing and the Xcode will give me an error and I'm gonna live with that error for a moment. So now that I implement, made my view controller capable of being a picker view delegate and picker view data source, implemented the number of component in picker view, implemented the picker view number of rows in component, I have also another function I have to implement which gives the title. It's also start with picker view and here is the function title for row. And this function as you see, oh you don't see it here, but in, it, get, it returns back a string. And that string will appear on the title for that row. So the function receives the picker view that's trying to build itself, the row that it's trying to build, so that's an index and the component that it is building. Since we, our picker view, we set it up with only one component, then we don't have to worry about the component variable, but the row index here will be important as you will see in a moment. So these are the different functions that my view controller now implements to, uh, to indicate, to, to provide the picker view. I haven't done added the picker view yet. I'm gonna do it at the end. So the next thing I want to do is to go to the view that load and load the file, the content of the file into a dictionary so that I can provide the number of rows and the number and the title for the row. So 
Since the dictionary I want to create will be used in view did load as well as used in these two functions, then I need to define it with the class scope so that I can use it in any function inside that class. So I will define the dictionary and say variable and maybe I can say units and I will define this as NS dictionary and I'm not going to initialize it now so I'll add this optional uh, field this optional operator in the view did load I want to load the file take all the contents from the file and put it in the units we've done this in project number one but with an array so we'll follow the same steps again first we get a reference to the uh, ab bundle so I'll say let ab bundle equal so this defines let app bundles define a memory location that has the scope of this function because I'm only going to use it within this function and then I'm going to assign to the app bundle the return value from the ns bundle the ns bundle call to the function main bundle so the main bundle function returns an object of reference or of type ns bundle which represent the actual path to the folder that has your app on the phone and I take that path and in, in that type bundle and put it in this app bundle variable or constant then get a reference to the path of the file that contains the unit so I say let file path equal using the app bundle I can get uh, the path for the source the path for the source and that function needs for me a string representing the name of the file whatever that name is and the type of the file whatever the extension is and the fine function gives me back a string with a question mark so I need to ex uh, extend that or, or add the exclamation point every time you see the type question mark returned add the uh, exclamation mark so the name here will be unit, units list and the reason I did double quotation because I'm providing a constant and then the string here will be the P list which is the extension and then I'm gonna add an exclamation mark at the end then finally but after I get the uh, load the content of the file into the dictionary so I'll say my units equal to initialize a dictionary we use one of the initialization method and we access that with the parentheses so as you can see there are several initialization functions to help you initialize a dictionary one of them is initializing a dictionary with content of file so I will select that function it needs a string that represents the path to the file which what this previous function has given me and I saved in my memory so I'll just refer to that saying the file path so what I'm saying here is that telling the function go to the file path go to the memory referenced by the name file path and you will find a string there take that string and that is a file open that file take the content and put in a dictionary the file content or the file type must be a dictionary see here the first line next to root it says dictionary if you're gonna load the file into an NS dictionary the type of the file must say dictionary as well these two must match this will load all the units and all the values into that dictionary so now I have the NS dictionary uh, here with me So now that you have the dictionary, I can get the count of the dictionary from the units, which is a reference to that dictionary in memory, and return it as the number of components. So I can say return. So what do I return? I'm returning units.count. Count 
gives you back an int. This is the same type that the function wants. And it gives you how many entries in the dictionary. So that will be it. So that gives the uh, picker view how many rows I want the picker view to have. Then the title is a little bit tricky. Because contrary to units, which we dealt with in project one, it's only one column. It's only one column. The I want to display only the key. See the units, this is the, this is the column I want to display in the picker view. So that column is called key. But the dictionary, every row has a key and a value. I don't need the, to display the value. I only need to display the unit. So I need to find a way to retrieve only the key column as an array, then use that array to display the title. So I can come here and say that let keys equal. And I ask my units, can you give me all keys? So it can give you all the keys in the dictionary. It's an array containing the dictionary keys. And then since the all keys give you back here that uh, default array, I can receive that as NS array. So now I have the key. We used the NS array before and we used the function Yeah, so, so the Hisse is uh, suggesting that you probably don't need to do that because this always succeeds. So we just need the as. And now it just tell you that you haven't used it yet, which we'll do later. So that's the NS array. And we, we have a function in the NS array that gives us the, uh, the object. So I will say here let. I need to cancel that. I don't want that. Xcode is being extra helpful. Uh, so I will say let the title equal. So I have the keys, which is an array, and we know that there's a function in the array called object at index. And that function needs an int to represent the index. So the index here, I'm going to use the row, the row itself to be the index of my uh, array. So, I mean, so if, if, the, if the picker view is constructing row number zero, I'm going to give them the first row in the, in the keys. If it's constructing row one, I'm going to give them the first row, the second row, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to use row and the row is defined here as a parameter and that will give me that but I need to take it as a string and this one I need to provide that exclamation point to ensure that the conversion done as a string then now that I got the title I need to return that title uh, to the caller and here this is needs me to return the string as a title and I return the string as a title. So what I did is I implemented uh, uh, in the view did load, I loaded the content of the file into a dictionary variable or object that has the class scope, used that object to get the count how many entries in the dictionary and return that as the number of rows in the Baker view and then used the uh, the object rows, the, the row of the dictionary of the Bickle view to retrieve the name of the unit, which is in a, in a column called keys. The dictionary is organized in a column called keys. So the name of the unit is in this column. And this is why I retrieved that column first as an array, as a single dimension array and then retrieved an object in that column at the index specified by the pickle view row and, and, and casted, changed the type to be a string and then returned 
that uh, content. So it says go to this variable called title, that, that memory, and return that string to as the title for the row. So that's all what we need to do in the controller. So now we go to the view and add the Bicker view. So I'll open up my utility area. In the object inspector, we want to look for the Bicker view. So I can type here in the filter, Bicker view. And this is the Bicker view. So I'm going to add a Bicker view object and change the width. So here is my Bicker view. You can also change the height. It's interesting. Uh, so that's my picker view, and uh, and you will see uh, that it displays that list of items. So now the picker view select the picker view. I need to to tell the picker view that this view controller, which is the view controller that Swift, this icon here is a reference to that view controller. I need to tell the Bicker view to use that view controller as a delegate and data source. So while selecting the Bicker view, press the control key and drag to the icon representing the view controller. Then release. It will tell you there are two types of outlets that this view controller can have for the Bicker view, data source and a delegate. This is because I made the picker view, the view controller capable of being that. If I didn't, you will not see that. Uh, see these two options. So I'll first make it a delegate, and then control and drag, and then make it a data source. You see here now it is selected, so make it a data source. And if you right click, you will see that this view controller, it tells you when you right click on this icon, you see the connections of the view controller. So the view controller has a built-in connection to the view, which is the white area on your screen. And then I added two connections, one as a data source to this picker view and one as a delegate to that picker view.